This is CRM Audio, the Microsoft Dynamics CRM podcast, with George Dubinsky, Joel Lindstrom, and Sean, the CRM Hobbit Haber. CRM Audio, the Dynamic CRM podcast, is sponsored by Kingsway Soft. They offer robust error handling and superior performance to streamline your development process and increase productivity. Their dynamic CRM tools simplify integration development work with easy-to-use development and scheduling processes. With their SSIS toolkit, your data integration can happen quickly and automatically so you don't have to worry about out-of-date records. The ultimate goal of the toolkit is to simplify data integration development work. By utilizing SSIS as your data integration platform, you can take advantage of the flexibility and power of SSIS ETL engine, which enables integration with virtually any application or data source that you may need to work with. We thank Kingsway Soft for their support of CRM Audio. CRM, there is CRM2, which is government, I believe. As uh, CRM3 Canada, CRM4 Europe, CRM5 APAC, uh, CRM6 Australia, CRM7 South America, CRM8 India, CRM9 Japan. I think I may have mixed the last three. I think you're, I think seven might be Japan. Seven Japan, eight India, nine South America, or, or two South America. Anyway, so you get the idea. I always thought it was interesting when I, the first time I saw a European URL, it was shortly after CRM Online 2011 came on and I saw CRM4. I thought at first it was like the domain reserved for CRM4 environments. Me too. So I'm saying that the Canadians are like five versions behind. <laughs> yes. Congratulations, Canada. You can now get on, you can now get CRM hosted within your own, your own uh, walls of your maple syrup sticky borders so that's good news i know a lot of canadian uh companies who uh were reluctant to go on CRM. i I don't know a lot of canadian companies but i have talked to some of our clients and i know that there was a concern uh canadian companies a a lot of them as i understand it like to keep their data within the country Um, or things like the paper i think i think we discussed that it's not um it's not an not option like for it. some of the companies. It's not about liking it or not. Right. Um, their laws are very similar. Privacy laws are very similar right. to Australian ones as part of right. Commonwealth. I'm not sure for how long Kings with all the events in Europe. Um, but uh, data like uh, uh, PII or um, government data or medical information or right. uh, financial information must stay in the country, um, so it's um, it, it goes way beyond um, how we would like, but we don't like. It's like it's the law. So um, so it's a good news for uh, Canadians. Same way as we see a huge uptake of CRM online in Australia after two Australian data centers went online. Um, so. Uh, well, technically, it's one logical, two physical data centers. I assume the same would be in Canada. Um, they shouldn't have any problems with cooling, right? <laughs> Depends on what well, part of Canada you're in. So now, if you have a truly global implementation, right, and you have, I mean, we're talking federation to really get um, that kind of ex- the user experience with with little latency across the globe. If I have you know users in in, in India and China and Australia and, and America, um, but how have have you guys had any experience with uh, implementation and uh, ex- the Express Route with that? Um, I've had clients look at Express Route, and most of them decide not to do it because it is very expensive. You don't just pay Microsoft. You also have to pay the ISP an arm and a right. leg. And you so, do, you do, but I mean, you you do get. And my understanding is, you only get two gigabit through to to the clock to Azure. So even if you know, if it seems like you're getting more to that, you're you're not. Um, 
Right. Look, I, 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 my take on it is I, I have not seen anybody license Express Route expressly for CRM, like, or only for CRM. But the companies that I know of that use Express Route generally have more infrastructure than CRM, either on Azure or on, on Office 365. And uh, it's usually a security. I think the performance is a plus, but I haven't. I haven't seen a lot of companies that can justify spending the extra money just for a little bit better performance. But if you have restrictions to where you have to have a truly private connection, then uh, and you have you know a number of infrastructure pieces on either O365 or Azure, then it can be justified. But that, that Express Route is a dedicated connection to that to that one data center, though, correct? It's yeah, not. It's, it's not it's, global. Hold on. What, what are you trying? What, what are you trying to do? Because we we did cover some of it um, in uh, tips of the day. Um, because if you after giving users an instance close to them, you right. can do that now. Uh, you can right. have no, a, a, no, no. But just wait a minute. Uh, governed by a single Active Directory. Mm -hmm. So it would be transparent for them. Um, the problem. Previously, the problem was that you have an enterprise and you have, yeah, you, you could have like Active Directory in each data center and, uh, you know, CRM in each data center, and it's absolutely unrelated to each other. So what now you can have a single Active Directory, which would govern multiple CRM deployments. You have to ask for it, but it's a, it's a flag that they enable, and you can deploy instances in different uh, regions. And that applies to production instances and sandbox instances and so on, so on. What it gives yes. you is ability for the users to log in transparently and flick between the instances without being prompted for, for any further logons. What it doesn't do for you, it doesn't replicate any data. So you still have right. independent instances, right. um, uh, which is probably not such a bad idea. I mean, you can set up, if you're talking about this scale deployment, I, I assume you do have a bit of money on the side that you can put into developing a reasonable replication solution uh, and you can partition your data by region and then you can solidate your data, say, in uh, Power BI or in a warehouse uh, for reporting purposes. So I would assume, yeah, so companies on a big scale would go for this solution. Express Route. Uh, and it's not specific to Microsoft. I looked into equivalent uh, on Amazon some time ago. It's, let's put it this way, it's very expensive, regardless of how big you are as a company. And we're talking about very expensive. Um, yeah, and especially if you're wanting to use the premium express route as opposed to the base express route. It gets yeah, even yeah. more expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and, um, and I think if you, if you want performance for an enterprise customer with people on different continents, the best answer still is, since you can't do a truly distributed environment uh, in instance, the best answer is try different regions and see which one gives you the most universally quick access. And what we found with a couple of very large customers is the Japan data center is very fast, even from North America. And hmm. so we've had clients that have people in Asia, people in Europe, and people in the U.S., go with the Japan data center for that reason. And it was still very, it didn't feel any slower than the North America from uh, when I was working in the environment. Can you actually when provision I, uh, um, CRM in Japanese data center? I thought they had local regulations that would stop you from doing that. I think if your client has a presence in Japan, you can. Oh, okay, yeah, so that's what right. I meant. You, you have to have a presence right. in Japan. Because they've got local regulations which uh, applies to data and particular to mobile carriers and things like that. And to yeah, addresses. You, can't, you so, can't send text messages in Japan without a license from Japan, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing I, I noticed, and this is this is kind of ties into some of our previous episodes, is uh, the Ribbon Workbench, the new version's out, and it's available as a plug-in for the XRM toolbox. It's like somebody did episode awesome. 23 and 25 together. <laughs> so that means power we need to have of the power this, of the podcast. That means we have to have Tangy and Scott Duro on the same episode now. Awesome. <laughs> um, I think we can just walk away and leave them to talk for a couple hours. Oh, I have I have <laughs> some news. My um 
my CRM uh, online environment finally got updated to the spring release, and as a result, I can confirm the lightweight Outlook client really does work. Excellent. I, I, I never That's got the work. preview version to work, but this one actually works, and I've used it to track emails. The question I have that I have not been able to get an answer for yet is, when is it going to work on mobile? Because the preview guide shows it on mobile, but if I and if I go to the Outlook Web Access app, I see the dynamic CRM link. I click it, and then it says your browser does not support this application. Oh, uh, what iOS. browser are you using? I'm just using uh, iOS, so it's uh, Safari. 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 What I found is that if you really, really, really want something to work on iOS, you get Chrome browser, right? And it's got this nice button or menu which says request desktop site. It starts pretending it's actually Chrome from the desktop. Well, Safari does that too now, uh, since iOS 9, I believe you can do that yeah, too. Yeah, but uh, okay. So have you tried that? I don't know, but I don't know how to make the the OA app open Chrome. Uh, I think you have to set your default browser as Chrome. Okay. Uh, you can't do that for some of the things. You won't be able yeah, to open. Uh, your uh, anyway, just what? Go to your Outlook web access and try from there. Um, it's not yeah, going to be I'll, pleasant I'll play, experience. I'll play with it more. I mean, I think uh, you know, I see the appeal of it. I have not yet totally removed the the full Outlook client uh, because I I still occasionally do my mail sweep where I highlight all the emails from a given person and track them all. And uh, the lightweight app doesn't yet let you do that. But I do see the uh, the appeal of you're in the email and being able to do it. You can actually do more things when you track than just hitting the track button. You can choose to create new records while you're there. I, you know, I see, um, again, I see now that it works and works fairly dependably. Um, it doesn't take, you know, an hour to open as well, which is nice. Once you, the first time I have to sign in, but once I do that, the next time it goes very quickly. <laughs> speaking of, uh, speaking of tips of the day, um, I have uh, I haven't written a lot of tips of the day uh, lately because in the last month or so I've, my travel schedule has been a little crazy. But I actually did write one, and it got a few people not believing me. And you know, so I've seen this happen multiple times, and that is when you use the same security rule for Teams as users, I, for some reason sometimes that it behaves unexpectedly. The you'll you'll assign a team a record and the users on the team won't see it. And what I've identified is in some situations, if the user and the team have the same security role, it causes some weird behavior, especially if the team is connected to a business unit other than the user. Because I, my theory is some reason, um, if the user has the same security role associated with him in two different business units, it can cause some weird things. And you know, people have commented and said, I've been doing that for years. I never had a problem. And then the la latest comment, this, uh, this guy, Juan, he said, I've done this for years. I read your tip. And later that day, it happened to me. Okay. So, so the advice is don't read Joel's tips. Then you'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> but I have this category of tips that people say I'm crazy when I bring them up because I swear I've seen these things and people don't believe me. The other, another one is... If you name a primary attribute the same schema name as an entity, weird things will happen. Like I if have seen have, that. If you have yeah. new underscore Tabor and you it, and you take the ID off the off the primary in, an, attribute and have new underscore Tabor, mm -hmm. you're going to have problems. But that's the yeah. same as you're gonna have problems if you name your uh, option set. Something like uh, option set code name. That's gonna send CRM into uh, into La La Land because you know that there is a pseudo attributes created in uh, in the view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have something like job code, and you'll have job code name. Right. So uh, job code name is like a virtual attribute, and it's part of the view. But if you name your attribute like job code name, that 
well, at least in 2013 from memory, that would send it to uh, up the wall. Um, it, it would start spitting some random stuff, some random errors. So right. um, I do believe you. I do believe you on this occasion. Uh, um, <laughs> I do believe you. I think the problems begin when you clash the explicit role with the inherited role. So if you're a member of yeah. the team somewhere down the food chain, um, inherited role will apply. And if this role has some scoped permissions, so not org-based, but business unit-based, that would clash with the explicit role. Uh, I, I totally can see this happening. And the, the here's where it came up this week, which was, the scenario was it worked fine in the UAT environment. They moved the co configuration to production, and the people on the teams could not see the see the stuff. And we recreated the role and started working fine, or created okay, a copy so. the role called Team Base or something. So Joel is not always crazy. So <laughs> I he love it. Speaking of always. <laughs> Speaking of naming, you know, naming weirdness, I love, you know, the classic rookie mistakes people do, like when they name, like to make a lookup field and they put, um, put contact name as the name of it. And then it's contact right. name, name, <laughs> right. Or ID, ID. That's right. I, 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 my, my favorite is when you're, when you create a uh, lookup on a, you know, and it auto creates the relationship and you don't edit whatever's in there. So it's like 50 characters long. And it's Pretty usually big. says like your prefix underscore yeah. contact underscore prefix underscore yeah. customer underscore contact underscore lookup ID underscore. Yeah, it makes and it makes no discernible, you know, sense. But uh, you just nah. those kind of things. And, you know, when you do that from I did run into something from when you're upgrading from, uh, I believe it was 2013, it was either 2013 or 2015, upgrading to 2016, that uh, long uh, schema name gets truncated, and then you get all kinds of solution import errors. Ooh. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. So watch out for that. Speaking of uh, tip of the day, uh, we did receive finally, finally, after um, 680 tips, we finally received our first request uh, to do some paid consulting. Have you actually seen the site? It's called Liquid Money. And, uh, <laughs> it's a yeah. fragment. It's a, it's a fragment. It's a cologne um, yeah, with the smell of money. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's basically, it's a cologne that smells like uh, real money, and they even send it in the box with some shredded uh, dollar bills. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but I wonder if it's, um, yeah, if we are going to get paid in shredded bills. Uh, yeah, if you look at the website, it's based on Japanese study that shows women are more productive around the site of, around the smell of money. Yeah, <laughs> and and if you look at uh, oh, I was wondering why we're so hopeless in Australia because we've got plastic money that don't smell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, but which brings me to an interesting topic for um for I guess for small businesses out there. I've read a brilliant reply, um, of uh, one of the designers, but web designers, but that apply equal. Oh, sorry, not web designers, copywriters. Uh, but that would equally apply to, to any other uh, small business that trying to make, you know, ends meet and trying to source new customers. And basically, this copywriter received a request saying that, look, um, I'm just trying this new thing. Um, and I'm planning going big, um, 300 articles a day, whatever. And I'm sourcing copywriters, so would you write something for me? And if it's any good, uh, then I'll pay you. I thought that copywriter response was absolutely brilliant. Copywriter said, look, we don't have established business. Uh, 
uh, sorry, establish relationships between ourselves. Uh, and I'm not sure about your ability to pay. So uh, what I'm proposing is uh, first trial, you just pay me money and I don't do any articles. So we're testing your ability to pay. Yeah, how many requests, not in a big corporation, but how many requests you guys have seen in your life when someone approaches and say, hey, look, you do the work, and if I like it, I'll pay you. Um, yeah, no, we, we, we have to we have, to have a remuneration up front. How do you say that? <laughs> yeah, but I like the idea that testing the client, uh, look, you pay me, and if I like you and I like your money, I'll do some work for you. Well, I believe he was uh, offering to pay us for our services, although I don't know that we, uh, as the, we as tip of the day, uh, configure CRM for people. Though. Our, co- our, our, our colleague, Mr. Tabor, will be glad to help him out. Exactly. You know, I have, I have, a, little, I have a little fable, a little story, that I think uh, ties in nicely with uh, some, of, some of the the social stuff that we're, we're seeing, you know, all the, all the big uh, solutions wanting to go into social monitoring and social sentiment. Uh, I can't ever say that word sentiment tracking. Um, I was, I was doing my own little social uh, marketing for my wife's uh, donors choose project. And I was lucky enough to get uh, a comedian, a famous comedian, uh, to retweet my tweet. I got, from that retweet, I got over 18,000, uh, I guess, what's it called, impressions. From that, from that 18,000 impressions, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you guys what you, what your thoughts are. How many, how many actual clicks of the link did I get out of 18,000 impressions? Impressions. Oh, yeah. how, many, oh, how many donations you got too? So like, so like when you when you when you when you tweet, based on who who how many people see it and what your exposure is, oh, okay. that's your impression, right? So right. this comedian, this famous comedian, is Maria Maria Bamford, and she's very funny. But so she retweeted it, and then I got more retweets and favorites and all that kind of stuff. So in the end, it was like eighteen thousand some odd uh, impressions. Out of that, out of eighteen thousand impressions, how many actual uh, clicks did I get on the link? Well, I'm going to, uh, based on when I've tried things like that, not on that scale, but when I've tried things like that, I've had people like retweet or like things, but then not actually click the link. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be somewhere around twenty percent. Okay, so I you're a single so- digit. Okay, so 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 Joel's saying out of okay, whereas right now it's seventeen thousand eight hundred fifteen. So out of out of close to eight eighteen thousand, twenty percent would be thirty six hundred clicks on yep. the link. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and and George, you're saying how many? Oh, I'm going for single digits, like seven. Okay. Okay. Seven percent. No. No, seven. he's saying seven. <laughs> yeah. No, seven percent. No, no, no. Joel, seven Joel clicks. Saying, he got he got seven. Okay, seven clicks. Okay. Yeah. So okay, now if we're doing this Price is Right rules, George would win because the actual number of clicks on the link is eleven. <laughs> See? Out, of, out of almost eighteen thousand impressions, there I got nine clicks. And how many donations did we get? Zero. So, wow. so what what that tells me is when a company's wanting to engage in social marketing, whether it's through CRM or whatever, the the tried and true story of have a social strategy, it to me has never been more resonant because just throwing stuff out there, whether it's for the podcast, whether it's for personal, what have you, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have uh, you know, people targeted audiences. If you don't have uh, an actual strategy, you there is. It's like it's like throwing just your hands up in the air and hoping someone sees you. You know what I mean? 
Right. It's uh, so when you could, when you when you take that in and you look at all of these different add-ons or solutions, or even if you look at the uh, the social uh, listening uh, that's part of uh, market uh, dynamics marketing, um, even that understanding what your what your customers are saying, you really have to have a strategy for that as well. Because if you just listen to all the noise, it's not going to really give you any kind of real knowledge on, on what your what your customers are saying. Um, you have to have a strategy on how you're disseminating that information, what you're trying to understand, and uh, what are the best uh, channels to do that in as well. I just thought it was nice, a nice yeah, little real uh, world example. Was that a was that a big letdown? You were, you were probably really excited when you saw her retweet it, and you get all the, all the impressions, and then see seven people. Yeah, it was it was it was very disheartening, because you know you think that you get all these retweets and all these likes and all these you know people say nice things that there's people actually clicking on them, and well, there's not. Here's, here's here's a small equivalent to that. I have. From time to time, when I uncover a bug or something that I feel pretty passionate about, and I put the connect item out there. I've tweeted out, "Please vote for this connect item," and had right. thirty people retweet it, and two yep. people actually vote for it. Right, right. <laughs> and I think, especially when you're talking about social causes, like what you're doing with the iPads and technology yep. for the classroom, mm-hmm. I. There's this weird social guilt thing where people see something like that and they think, of course, I want to look like I support children, so I'm going to retweet that. And then, but they don't actually do anything. It's kind of like the ice bucket challenge. I'm going to dump right. ice on my head and make this funny video encouraging people to do something, but not actually do something. Right. And and more, and you know, more often than than the clicks uh, for the link, I got added to to random lists. It was just bizarre. I, I got added to technology lists or children lists or literacy lists. And, and, you, and when, if you're wondering how you're how you see the impressions that you get for a tweet, um, on at least you can see this either in the on the web or on the uh, mobile Twitter mobile app. You you open the the tweet, and there's a little uh, graph icon that says view tweet activity. When you click on that, it gives you some statistics. So, like for this uh, for this tweet, I had the impressions, which are the times people saw the tweet on Twitter, total engagements. So that's how many times people interacted with the tweet, and then it breaks down those engagements to tell you was it a detail expand, was it a like, was it a, a link click, was it a profile click, was it a retweet. So that's a very simple level uh, analysis. Of, of your social activity and, you know, looking at expanding this, just not even talking about social monitoring, but when you're looking at things like exact target or click dimensions or one of those email uh, management tools where you're looking for uh, uh, how many times did they click a link that was embedded in, in the email? How many times did they open the email? How many times did they, you know, forward it on to somebody else? Those kind of metrics. Again, it's important to have a strategy, not just deploy a tool just to have all that data come in. You have to have a plan for what you're going to do with that data and what does it mean. So if, the, if you get 50% of the people that you, that you do an email campaign, if they click on that link and open your page, okay, that's great, but they didn't, have, they didn't buy anything or did they register for what you're offering or did they... You know, did they take action? Because like I'm showing here, 18,000 impressions, that seems like an incredibly successful tweet. When in reality, it was it was the same as if I didn't tweet because I didn't get any donations out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. and I guess that was my, uh, my uh, short-sightedness, uh, thinking that just because someone of note uh, retweets it, that's going to mean something. And that's not necessarily the case. You have to have a, a good story and you have to, you know, have a compelling 
offer. Just, no, just I guess like you, could, you could tr- somehow compile the people who retweeted that or whatever and tweet them back and say, <laughs> hey, could you could you donate or... Yeah, and but I think it's like you said, it's it's much easier to retweet and feel good about yourself, uh, you know, than it is to 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 donate. And I'm not and I'm not saying that people are bad for not donating their news prerogative. But it's the point of you know, when you when you when you do social marketing, uh, whether it's through CRM or what have you, um, if there's a if, if a strategy is not in place and you're not understanding um, or, or making valuable what the real offer is and make it compelling for them to be engaged. So, for example, if you have a link embedded in your email, it has to have a good story in that template to have them click on that, that link. And then when you click on that link, your page has to be compelling to offer uh, them something to navigate through. And then your product has to be compelling in order for them to engage in it so you know it's, it's that big flow flow through that uh that makes it uh, a complete uh, experience for for your for the person that's interacting with your with your tweet with your uh offer with what have you right just thought, right. I thought it was a neat parallel yeah um, i think i think you know sad to say a lot of the tweets going out with the ms dine crm tag on it are people blindly retweeting without really reading this stuff too I mean, there's absolutely these 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 Twitter accounts spring up all the time with, you know, CRM news or something like that. And they'll retweet a tip of the day or something and and then send us a tweet saying, like, it's a big congratulations. Hey, your tweet made this page much better when they're just trying to get people to look at their their page. Yep. Or those paper leak paper dot li paper leak when those uh, that was big a couple of years ago. And those those auto generated uh, newsletters would just randomly pull. I used to get so excited when when I got uh, mentioned, and then I realized, oh, it's just a, actually it's a it's a tweet that I retweeted. I didn't have really anything to do with it, but I'm getting mentioned. I'm getting mentioned by this page that has less followers than I do, and I never tweet anything. <laughs> Um, but every so now true. and then, it's weird. It's like some minor celebrity account will follow me or follow one of our Twitter accounts. Like mm-hmm. the latest one for me was Susan Bennett, the voice of Siri, is now she following follows me, me too. Yeah, and I have no idea why. No, oh, I thought it was because I was compelling, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> but now you know that she follows me, so she's just a robot anyway. My my iPhone calls me Mr. Stark anyway. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so did we talk? Did we talk about the new trial stuff? Um, I think we alluded to it, but we didn't really talk about it. George, what's the oh, deal was that with before you? we started going? Yeah, it was before we started going. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to sound like a where do I begin? Came up um, with this look, idea. Um, where do I begin? Look for. Um, for months, if not years, um, you know, we've been promoting the idea of uh, um, uh, laughen when corporal, corporal punishment um, for developers that don't do their job very well, or rather developers and customizers and administrators who don't learn from their mistakes and they keep repeating the same um, stuff over and over and over. So there are some good practices in CRM customizations and development that's been um, like distilled um, through the um, through the men years of bad mistakes and handling someone else's mess and so forth. What, uh, and I totally understand the notion when Microsoft puts in uh, a trial data, uh, uh, trial customizations and trial data to improve the experience um, for, uh, for people who see CRM for the first time. And, you know, we've been discussing that for quite some time, saying that CRM out of the box, it's a bit raw. It could be intimidating. So anything to improve the experience would be great. And uh, that's exactly what Microsoft tried to do with their latest uh, selection of choices. Are you sales? Are you marketing? Are you both uh, when you provision the trial? 
what they do, they install a trial solution that adds some of the features. Now, what we we discovered, and there's been some heated discussions about it, uh, is that this solution violates every single uh, rule or best practice of CRM development and customizations. Um, there is prefix new, there are dead attributes, there are some misleadingly named attributes, there are some uh, spontaneous relationships between entities, there are some form customizations not called for, there are some charts that are not used, there are useless charts. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm really disappointed with what came out. And There's I know- the cardinal sin of having multiple charts for the same thing, basically. Like, you know, when you have a rookie configurator that thinks, okay, I need, you know, I need, you know, close opportunities by segment, open opportunities by segment, and they make the same chart basically for different views when you can use the same chart for every everything. Yeah, so um, I'd say, yeah, I'm disappointed, but I don't know how this solution even passed the master, um, but where's the, you know, entry bar how high it is for the solution to make it into you know official trials uh, trials are frequently especially for smaller clients the basis of their production environments because you do a trial you buy your licenses you license the trial for an enterprise client not so much you can you know, they typically have multiple environments they can wipe out their environment easily but if you're starting and you build something in the first 30 days and you want to keep it going forward, if it's got this other stuff in there, then it's a problem. The good news is there is now fourth button when you provision trials, which says I'm sales, I'm marketing, I'm both. And there is a fourth one, uh, fourth selection says, don't put any solutions for me. Thank you very much. I'll do, right. I'll do fine on my own. That would give you a standard trial. I think it would still give you uh, sample data. Um, uh, but that would give you like standard sample data that been around for ages with the uh, Jim Glynn bracket sample and stuff like this. Um, did, did, have you, have you also noticed in the trial and I just spun up a trial this morning. So this is kind of timely. Um, the social engagement dashboard is, is actually a, an image within an iframe. It's not an actual dashboard. Wow. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's an actual image. Can you click it, on that? No. It doesn't do anything. And you can see the blue. You can see like the little blue box around it. The, it's, the, it reminds me, you know, when you used to walk ages ago into a TV shop and on every TV screen, they would have this, you know, a cardboard. So TV uh -huh. is off, but they have this cardboard. Um with some picture, uh, right. which is <laughs> picture on it. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of, yeah, it reminds me uh, yeah, of that. It's a little, little interesting. Every other dashboard renders actual uh, data, but the uh, social engagement is just Yeah, look, uh, I totally understand the pressure Microsoft is on uh, as far as social engagement is concerned because they are consuming pipelines and those pipelines cost money. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that, right? So mm -hmm. they can't give you a pipeline for every trial. The same way as if you want trial for the portals, um, they are slowly rolling them out, um, but they're not publicly available yet. So they're mm -hmm. available if you are um, um, a partner um, or they're available and ask for it, or if you're internal or if you're an MVP. Uh, but they're not uh, publicly available yet simply because they carefully monitoring uh, the capacity, um, Azure capacity, because e each trial requires resources and it's free. So who's going to pay for it? Um, right. So that's that's the challenge. And I assume with the social uh, social engagement, this is exactly what the challenge is. Every single pipeline costs you money. Would it be Facebook, Twitter, or what's not? I, I just think a better implementation would would have been something 
Uh, maybe if there's a video or a learning path or something rather than just a picture. Um, I totally you know agree. I, mean? I would prefer like iframe with the small video which says, and here you would see some cool stuff if you had it enabled. Right. Um, Helping you understand, you know, what the data is in there, how, how you can access that. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too, uh, too picky, but. It no, just, uh, um, I totally see how uh, Mars could be used, uh, whatever it stands yeah. for, assistance, you know, the latest help in CRM. Right. Um, I thought that something could be done, even around the image. If it's a static image, you can still do this, you know, uh, one, two, three things. Click here and you would see this if you had it enabled. Click here and you would see that. Um, right. So it would be nice kind of semi-interactive uh experience uh, not experience but semi-interactive kind of demo of what would have been there um yeah uh, which would be miles better than uh, static image but yeah for now we just have to see uh, to live with the uh, picture of tv <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> i suppose well i heard from uh from the crm UG committee, and I have three of my sessions were approved for CRM UG Summit 2016. Which ones? Uh, keeping up with the dynamic CRM rapid release cycle, server-side synchronization, and CRM for Outlook, and what I'm doing with Jim Steger, uh, new mobile client, Excitement. Very nice. I'm actually a little bit put out with Sean right now because... I came to. Ta I'm in Tampa, Florida right now, home of Sean Tabor, and he right. left. When I'm I was in New York City, he went to New York City. <laughs> okay. Wanted to get as far away from Tampa as he could. Shall I expect the same reception when I come over in October? <laughs> oh no, no, I'll, I'll definitely be there for that, George. I had some really good, uh, good, authentic Florida grouper. It's a grouper sandwich is a fine thing. I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway, yeah, um, I'm coming to share MUG too, but I'm coming two days earlier to do some pre-conference training. Um, I believe it's available through the website. Um, more details will be available by the next episode. But yeah, um, we're doing some uh, trying to repeat success of the last year with some uh, conference training. I find that CRM UG audience is one of the um, best audiences um, as far as learning is concerned. They're so keen to learn mm -hmm. um, um, unlike say some other conferences where you know developers roll in and they say oh yeah what can you teach us you know um, right. we know it all and users uh, or audience of CRM UG is so um, so eager to learn to receive the information, it's it just uh, yeah, I love it. So definitely going. I'll be there in uh, in October. Do you find there's always like one troublemaker in the class though that gives you a one on the survey? Uh, yeah, it's not about given one on survey. I gave up on this long time ago. I, I think I did mention the most enthusiastic student in Germany who gave me one, but the only reason was that he wasn't paying attention that one is the lowest mark. Um, <laughs> While in German schools, one is the highest mark. Um, <laughs> since then, I kind of stopped paying attention to that. There is always will be someone um, not satisfied with whatever you present. It doesn't matter how brilliant you are um the problem is that troublemakers distract the other students so i yeah. tend always to have like a couple um really tough challenges like firm theorems of crm development um saying okay you think you're smart okay he's the smart challenge for you go and do it and that typically shuts them off for about you know 30 minutes to an hour because they're trying to tackle this challenge. Um, so I do or tend to have the, those up the my really, There's the really eager guy who whose company still uses CRM version 3 and his company sent him to CRM UG to get some, get some learning. And he, he has uh, the questions about, I can't get the redeployment wizard to work. 
<laughs> or something that nobody else is using anymore. I always oh, say, talk to me the class. I've got some. I've got some uh, ideas for you. Let's talk about that afterwards. And then you run away. <laughs> exactly. Um, though I do want to go um, go back to one of the most recent tips. Um, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't know that I should have, and I didn't. Um, so what I want to bring up is the site called letsencrypt.org. I saw that. That was interesting. I hadn't heard about that. Exactly. So, um, and basically, what it is, it's a uh, it's initiative supported by some major vendors. Um, like Hewlett Packard, you know, I'm just looking for sponsors, SiteGround, uh, Akamai, um, Chrome, so Google has finger in it, uh, Shopify. So a lot of sort of major sponsors. The idea is that HTTPS certificates um, shouldn't be expensive. Well, they shouldn't cost anything, basically. Um, and the idea is, or their mission is to get 100% um, web on HTTPS. So get it off HTTP into HTTPS. For that, you need certificates that are free and easy to issue without compromising security. And that's exactly what they've been working on. Um, before sort of you, you know, yell hooray and jump into it, there are a few caveats around it. The built-in cert bot client um, is only Unix flavor based. So for iOS, you would have to do some work though. I've seen PowerShell scripts enabling it. It's only 90 days. The argument, there are arguments, pros and cons saying that, look, it's easy to reissue. So it should be automated. So if you compromised, if your certificate compromised, it's only like for duration of up to 90 days. Um, they don't store private keys. So if you lose your private key, um, well, you have to reissue your certificate. Um, what else was there? There was something else. Uh, it's, um, it is one of uh, tip of the days. Um, yeah, it's in fact, that was yesterday. So uh, 600. But it doesn't, it doesn't support... Um wildcard certificates yet, I think you said? No, not yet, um, but with up to 100 alternative domain names, it's kind of moot point, unless you do need a wildcard. Uh, for example, for um, a partner-hosted deployment where you have multiple orgs uh, for your customers. Don't you and have that wildcard cert for YFD? No, you don't have to have wildcard certificate. It just makes it much easier. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you don't have to have, but then you kind of limit it in the names that you, right. uh, uh, CRM organization names that you want to expose. Um, the other one is if you're after extended validation or organization validation, you know, those extra green stuff that you get with your certificate, um, that's not available either. Because yeah, right. well, that's kind yeah, of I think, I think that's, I think validation. That's a good so. thing, and and definitely people like GoDaddy need need comp competition like this because they're terrible. But um, anyway, the uh, the challenge I've seen is CRM administrators are either short staffed and and a lot of them are lazy too, in in that they don't keep up with when certificates expire, even if it's every year, every two years. And so a 90-day certificate expiration is going to be something <laughs> that most CRM administrators aren't going to want to touch the touch or remember they have to touch it. And then if it went down every 90 no. days, that would be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the idea is that you automate. That kind of encourages this 90 days, encourages you to automate the process. And I don't see it use, being used for CRM, but let's say if you have a web service, right? How many times... Um, did you see the people, uh, the implementers cutting corners and say, hey, look, we, uh, we don't want to deal with HTTPS, so let's do it HTTP. Like, who who needs this? There's, there's no valuable data floating around with that service and so on. 
Uh, and this approach basically it says, look, it costs you nothing. You just need to automate it. And there is no reason not to put a HTTPS in place. So that's the bottom right. line. Uh, I'd go for it. It's a great initiative. Um, and uh, hopefully they get a bit more than 11 that. followers. This has been CRM Audio, the Microsoft Dynamics CRM podcast. You can hear previous episodes on our website, crm.audio. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at CRM Audio. Or leave us a comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash CRM podcast. If you have any topic suggestions or questions that you would like for us to answer on a future episode, please drop us an email at voice at crm.audio. Special thanks to Dale Simmons for our theme music. Go check out his website, dalesimmons.com. Please join us next time on CRM Audio.